Oh yeah, and now you can see me as well. Thank you very much. Yeah, a warm welcome also from Germany to the distinguished guests all over the world. It's really pretty that we cannot cheer a beer afterwards. I really miss that. So looking forward to do that next year or the day after whatever it happens. So uh, my talk is about uh, the harmonization of maritime services. And uh, this is a very specific issue. And I think it's very important to have an eye on that with all these upcoming technologies today that can provide us with some benefits and new ideas and how to bring these things together. And this is definitely needed to uh, make a transition into a new future of e-navigation and shipping, especially if it comes to disruptive uh, developments. And uh, you see it, by the way, as we make progress in digitalization uh, by all these people working now from home and everywhere. So we're talking about the harmonization. And next, please, uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so just give you a brief overview. I would like to give you a short motivation and then make a little dive into the technology and bring you a conclusion. Next slide, please. Yeah, maritime services. And uh, there's, uh, there already are numbers, maritime services being digitalized and we have public services like navigational warnings and weather forecasts and we have a big, big bunch of commercial services like voyage planning, fleet monitoring, delivery of nautical charts. And you see this is a mixed setup of public and commercial activities here, port service and all that stuff. And um, this gives us a great chance to shape our future for a better harmonized navigation and shipping and to make shipping an integrated part, for instance, in global supply chains with uh, on the track delivery. And to, to gain this advance, we have to look a little bit on the issues of harmonization. And we can do that on the next slide, please. There is a big potential, as I said, to, to, to make use of all the technologies actually available. And uh, this allows us to harmonize all the things, to bring things together and to make use of it. And definitely in case of digitalization, the summary of all bits together is more than just to sum them up. And uh, for instance, just an example, actually, no technology used in e-navigation is prone to cybersecurity. And uh, there is a definitely a need to address this issue. And uh, by setting up new technologies like IP-based services, there is enough bandwidth, for instance, to make authentication and security an issue. So this is not only coming with threats, it's also coming with a lot of solutions here. So in the end, we can reach complete new applications of maritime technologies like autonomous shipping. And with new requirements coming up it, with security, efficiency, and interoperability. Next slide, please. Okay, well, harmonization is coming with a lot of challenges because most of the technologies are developed independent from each other. So not having the other technologies in mind, there is a new technology coming up brought to the market and to make success, we definitely need to harmonize that. So bring together the multiple means of communication. By the way, did you have a look on a, on a vessel nearby? How many antennas and satellite receivers they have uh, on, on the roof of a bridge? So this all costs a lot of, terrible lot of money. And to bring this all together to harmonize that can definitely improve, let me say, the efficiency and the costs of uh, using digital services. And um, we have some uh, some examples like GMDSS of a single window that it is really bringing things together. And this has to be more elaborated and brought to the other areas of maritime uh, e navigation as well. So we have independent suppliers and uh, you can really make a lot of benefits to bring together all the services from the supplier side because you offer more valued service from the customer side because you have only a single source of information you can make use of it and if you go to the next slide please so of course bringing together all this different information and services by the various providers we have to bring to have to provide some kind of single interface to it 
nobody on the bridge was like to make use of all these different providers and collect all the information and to do, to make uh, sure that uh, they are consistent and that, uh, that they are potentially paid and all the things. So there is really the need of a consensus of the operational approach and technical realizations to be found. So uh, we have to really look for a standardized infrastructure and uh, that is able to support as many services as possible. And of course, to underline that, security, interoperability, efficiency, and the gain you take out as mariners and uh, responsible for a fleet taking out of that is a quite important issue. Uh, we are on one hand quite lucky because we have, a, meanwhile, a very long uh, discussion and negotiation of the IMO e-navigation strategy, and at least uh, they provide us with some kind of framework to do so. And uh, to make the best out of it, of course, a lot of harmonization efforts have to be spent. Next slide, please. Uh, as I said, the IMO makes uh, already an introduction to maritime services. It's a standardization of the scope of it. And of course, uh, it is able to understand the common understanding of maritime services. But it leaves, uh, leaves us with a lot of issues here. We have to put now emphasis on to make uh, use of the ideas of these maritime services in the context of e-navigation. So there is a harmonization in purpose. So this is already this can be done already by the description of the maritime services. There is, of course, a need of an understanding of the operational approach, how to make this operational services um, uh, as a living issue and how to bring them on the market and how to make them available for mariners. We have to look, on the, of course, all the time on the user needs. So user needs and what is provided by the suppliers is really important to be um, aligned. And we have to look up the provided information. And uh, these maritime services should not be uh, provided uh, one by one, but it has to be an integrated, there's the need for an integrated approach here as well. Next slide, please. Okay, if we look on the maritime services, just a short example here for the uh, operation services. We are dealing here with nautical warnings. So if you look at that, we are already making good progress here together with uh, inter international workforce. And we have a look on that in the MCP session just after this one. Uh, the authorities coming up with nautical warnings when they will be coordinated and distributed and then make provider when we can provide them to the vessels and here we can make use of them directly portrayed in an active system or directly presented to um, uh, the nautical officer and each of the errors you see here the, in this diagram is definitely need uh, harmonization course, all the time, sender and receiver has to understand what is coming up and to and be able to receive messages. And to deal with that, um, there's uh, initiative uh, driven especially by IALA to provide a specification of technical services so that beyond the general description and um, the operational view of the maritime services, there is the different the need to harmonize all the technologies behind or to make them interoperable. Next slide, please. So uh, the IMO document is coming up with an definitely understanding. So we have maritime services as they provide the operational perspective of that. And uh, so where we are for, how the information is provided and all that stuff. And of course, it comes with technical specifications. And here we have a YALA guideline, how to define them, how to explain them, so that the te technician who is providing the technology to be provide this information on the bridge can read the specification, can analyze the specification and design the system according to the specification. Beyond that, of course, data is exchanged. And uh, so at the last end here on the right side, of course, we need um, a common 
maritime data models, and we are very lucky that uh, we have, for, on the one hand, an outstanding, very impressive uh, progress here with all the S100 data models, and they can provide us with a lot of um, uh, data types that we can make use to exchange the information by the technical services and to provide them to the mariners as a maritime service. So thank you very much for this slide. Next one, please. As you, if you look at Dave sitting there in his dark house with uh, making use of the IP, let us remind that the internet is designed to be resilient against a nuclear global war. So at least there is a big chance if we go forward and further to look more for IP-based communication, that this IP-based communication can provide us a very resilient, but also a very usable um, uh, technology here, so that can be used for a lot of approaches and is very resilient and is very universal. So if we look for a more implementation of IP-based services to be made uh, available by uh, low Earth satellites or by technologies as they are explored here in the very impressive smart project in Korea using maritime LTE. So broadband IP sooner or later, I'm definitely um, can make a bet on that, is coming to each vessel uh, very, very sure, and it gives us the opportunity to provide authentication and security mechanisms that are way beyond what we have actually with uh, all these digital services that are very, very um, open for digital attacks. Next slide, please. So based on this, we, did, we need more and more specification of how we make use of the internet technologies. And here, a very elaborated mechanism like web services available that is also made use in the maritime connectivity platform. And we see how this is all working in the next session here about the pla upcoming platforms to make use of that. But very important word, the, the web service is a very old and established standard and you can make use of it, of course, without using all the services coming from the maritime connectivity platform. So, in fact, it is a very, very good base technology for the harmonization in the world of e-navigation. And by using extra services as from the MCP, it's just making your life a little bit easier. Next slide, please. So now we deal with the communication backbone and how this is used. And the last the current building block here is uh, proper data models. So we have the S100 hydrographic data models, and of course there is an issue because it is named the hydrographic data model. And maybe we have uh, we can look, put more emphasis on it to make it even more universal. There is a lot of features coming with this data modeling technology, especially um, taken from the hydrographic area. And of course, uh, most of the most of the technologies here uh, are used. Uh, not only on hydrographic, so but are based on hydro uh, on geospatial information. So definitely, it's a good starting point. But there is a need to make this a little bit more universal in the future. So that was the building main cornerstones. And please, my next slide. And to sum that up, so we have for the harmonization the concept of maritime services that gives us the operation perspective. We have a way to do the technical specification by using the technical services and making use of the LILA guideline for the technical specification. And we have the very important issues about the data modeling, the initiative started by the IHO and taken over by a lot of other domain owners here to harmonize and understand the data. So in fact, you can definitely see say that there is not no need for new technology but to bring them all together, what already existing, with a little pepper like uh, uh, maritime LTE and low Earth orbital satellites and something like that. And if we succeed in the harmonization of all that things, we can really make that as basis for better and future e-navigation e and maritime services. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>